Welcome back to Strategy and Snark. Today, we're looking at the Vault of the Night. I haven't done this one in a little while, but I have done this one many times. We're going to be over here in House Kondarik. K for Kondarik instead of M for Map. So, the Banking District. We are way over here, closer to where the giant pyramid bank thing is. I don't know why the banks are pyramids, but... So, <clears throat> Merrick, he is the head of a band of, well, thieves, basically. Kind of these little adventurers, but like he, he has his own group. But they're disbanded. They attempted to break into the titular Vault of Night, but they failed. So he is sad to see all of his friends go their own separate ways, and he wants our help to kind of get the band back together. So, first one. Uh, literally within, within sight. He literally could just walk over here and ask his friend to come back. Dirge of Karnath. So, Dirge's problem is not that he doesn't want to be a member of the Laughing Knives, which I know it's older, but <laughs> it's a little close to Laughing Coffin, if you remember, know what that show that's from. Anyway, he broke his weapon when they were in the Vault of Night. All he wants is a new weapon. But uh, the bouncer won't let a human in. Because this is the Tharash Karina. So, House Tharash um, is another mercenary kind of guild. It, the little splash scene says they compete with House Deneath. I feel like they're another one of those, like, traditionally monstrous races kind of guilds. I'm pretty sure Thorani is the actual, like, gruel type one that is strictly... You know, I should probably just look it up, but I think Thorani is still the strictly monstrous races. These ones are just a jerk. <laughs> they just don't... They just don't want to play with anybody else. I could be wrong. Maybe I got them backwards. Thorani and Thorask do not have their own sections of the city. Whether that is because they won't or because they just haven't been added yet. Who knows? They have added layers to this city. So like uh, House Caneth, we're not there yet. It has a section of the city, though. Lord's Mark Plaza. Lord's March. Has a section of the city. So this is the guy that Dirge wanted us to go meet. Uh, if we bribe him for a, a thousand gold, he'll give us the password. We don't actually need the password. And if you're rude to him, he just either leaves or fights you. But seriously, we have 102,000 platinum. We basically have infinity gold. So, what we're going to see any moment now, once we get through all of these caves, Gorgon the Promoter, or Grogon, it's an actual like arena like this is just a pit fight and the prize for the winner is a spiffy axe which is in that little bubble right there so we're gonna go sign ourselves oh i actually do have to talk to the registrar you're not the registrar though you're the promoter So, we try to do things the right way. We say, hey, you're having a combat-based 
event would you like to see some combat? And he goes, no, screw you. It's like, all right, well, fine. We're going to combat anyway. This little kobold. We're going to say roast halfling because that's the password. He lets us in because we have the password. Or you could murder all of the trolls if you don't have the password. And he goes, okay, I surrender. Here, I open door now. Cobalt no want die. More hallways. I don't think we ever go in that door. So you get to this crossroads. You need to turn right. We're going to go both ways, but uh, save yourself some time. Go right. It's kind of not even worth it for me to hit these guys. They'll catch up eventually. So, what we need, as the, the game has helpfully already told us, is we need a key to the ready room. Basically, we're going to steal somebody else's spot in the games. Conveniently, the trolls just leave their key just sitting there. And now we have to run all the way back to the crossroads and then all the way down the other direction so that we can actually get into their door. Because the door they're standing next to, not their door. You know, now that I think about it, we came in that way, so... <laughs> Those are fanboys. Because the door they were standing in front of, that's where the champion comes out, and the champion, yeah. Those were just some fanboys trying to get autographs back scene. That's what that was. Alright, we're almost to the door. Just a lot of hit the guys in the hallways as you go. Couldn't have been any of the closer doors. It had to be the farthest possible door. You know this words about this gate. Ready room one. So, here's the actual, like, troll gladiators. These guys are the ones who are getting ready to fight. So we killed all the fanboys who went to go and get a autograph. Then we killed their teammates. And... Boop. We talk to the guy. He sends us in. Now begins the arena fight. Grogon is not happy that we're here, but, you know, the show must go on, right? Doesn't really have a choice. So he's going to try to make everybody else team up to get us. Not a bad plan. It's not going to work. Not a bad plan. So, defeat kobold and ogre gladiators. Strangely enough, the kobolds are more dangerous. So we're going to run over here, and we are going to look for any of the one the kobolds who look like casters. Ooh, that hypnotic pattern actually landed. Take out all the casters first. Then we'll go hit these ogres. Yeah, the ogres hit harder, but they hit their hardest when you can't move because the kobold hypnotized you. Now we're going to do minotaurs and mephits, and then again, you would think minotaur, big and strong, mephits. So, kobolds, I think that's the ogres, minotaurs, mephits. I know the Mephits are over here. Door open. I guess I got the Ogres and the... That was easy. Got the Ogres and the Minotaurs backwards, but whatevs. So now we handle a couple of Minotaurs. And then they're going to send... All of them at us at the same time. So who's more dangerous, kobolds or mephits? Probably kobolds. It's 
I just don't trust those casters. You never know when they're just you're gonna roll a one on your save, you can't move, and that's when like three Minotaurs are charging you and two of the ogres are doing a three hit jump combo. Just never let the casters sit there. All right, that's the end of the kobolds. So now we're going to try to aim for the methods. Is that all the methods? All right, that's everybody. So then, remember, I mentioned the uh, the trolls were hanging out outside the champion's door. You know, nobody ever comes out of that door. Oh, arena fight. This one's not as bad as some of the other wave fights we've done because it kind of, like, it has a little bit of weight as the announcer is talking them up, like WWE style, but... Big old named troll. And then... The promoter's just like, I'll get you myself. Like, nah, you ain't Vince McMahon. I, you ain't gonna win the fight because you own the place. And we take the axe. It's actually not a bad axe. Keen, Vorpal, Adamantine, Flaming Birth. It's actually a legit, it's a legit axe. If you want some treasure, you can pick up that guard tower key that the promoter dropped. And just hug around the corner, and this is the guard tower. It has guards. And these levers are supposedly what lets you... Not you, but that's how they're opening the other doors. So I guess it's probably a good... Well, no, it wouldn't have mattered. If they would have known you were down there before you came out, they probably wouldn't have opened your door. But they thought it was trolls. So, got the axe. The fighter's happy. Easy. Everybody else is going to be a little more complicated. Fighter, basic. We still haven't found a better wisdom item. All right, back to the quest giver. Now we're going for the Arcanist. So they're wizard. So if you thought like, if you thought we had seen anything in this game. All right, so he's got, this guy is standing guard because like he's in love with this other lady. We go in here and she just is kind of standing there. The place is kind of tossed a little bit. Something obviously went wrong. I don't think we ever find out exactly what happened, but there's some sort of magic drawing you into the same slumber that she's caught in. All right, I'll bite. The prison of the mind. We are literally in her mind. So she's lost her memories. So we need to bring her four things that remind her. Good thing that this still counts as the entrance. <laughs> Four things that remind her of her, her memories. We're going to do the hard one first. Well, I say hard. The longest one. There's four paths. One, two, three, and... Tech, well, okay, there's three paths. This one branches. So, the gimmick here is obviously we're, like, not on anything so don't fall down and as we run into various spots stuff will happen there's nothing here and then there's a beholder 
kill the beholder, a chest spawns. We got a locket. That's one of the four items we want. That's the easiest one. Walk up, smack a beholder, got it. The rest of them are not going to be that easy. That's why there's two this way. We climb this ladder. <laughs> I mean, okay. I would, I would not want to climb this ladder. This ladder is too tall. I would, I would start panicking halfway up that ladder. Now we have a maze. So if you have enough jump, you can kind of skip part of the maze. At least, I believe on Heroic. They did a little shuffling of how this quest worked on Epic. So if you have enough jump, you can actually jump out of the water onto the bridge, which I do not have because I am big chonky paladin. But you can just jump onto the bridge and then just continue. I have to actually find the piece of bridge. Free toy. I'm not going to take any of that. On Epic, you kind of have to run around anyway because they added um, some runes you have to hit. And they're all over the maze, so... Because on, Ep on Epic, everybody has enough jump just by virtue of being an Epic character. Like, it's n negligible efforts to have enough jump. <laughs> I just hear the higher they go, oh. Again, I'm ignoring the traps, but these, these traps on Heroic are not particularly scary. Like, there was a dart trap. Dart traps barely hurt, hurt us even when we stand in them on purpose. So we're on the roof now. I'm gonna keep climbing the scaffolding. Told you this was gonna be a little longer than the first one we got. And now we're gonna talk to Ings told it. I want the mirror. He gets mad at me. I do believe that if you have enough of one of the social skills, you can avoid the fight with him. But I don't. So we hit him. Use the key. Get the mirror. Okay. We can jump to not have to run through the maze, but you do need to back up one rooftop first. How ballsy am I feeling? So you could normally I just run down there and I jump and we're right back at the entrance. I think I'm going to I'm going to see if I can See, this is just we could have walked from the entrance this way. I'm going to see if I can land right on top of this beholder. I missed my big cleave. Sadness. So I'm not even casting my buffs because um, beholders just knock all your stuff out anyway. I will put on a little bit of extra oomph for this section. We're going to fight a bunch of these mind spiders. They can damage your charisma, our best stat, when they hit you. If charisma is not your best stat, be very careful. <laughs> if you got an eight charisma because you're like, whatever, I don't care. Yeah, yeah, you might end up dead. <laughs> if you hit zero, I don't think you can move. So just keep moving. Don't let them all gang up on you at once. They do like to phase in and out. I think they're based on phase spiders. Alright. When they're all dead, the ladder spawns. So those Korai, those spider thingies, are probably the main reason this lady is stuck in her mind. 
They are creatures of the the plane of uh, of dreams, or spe more specifically, nightmares. Here we go. We got a blossom. Got it off the tree. Now we're just gonna jump and walk back the way we came. And now we're gonna do the most annoying one. But yeah, I'm pretty sure what happened is that she's she was attacked by those mind spiders. They stole her memories because they're just feeding off of her. All right. Wait for them to turn off. Move. Don't try to don't get greedy and try to do two at a time. You'll just end up blown off into nothingness. You don't die if you fall. But you have to fight a spider or two, and then it'll spawn a portal that takes you back to the entrance. But don't... Don't get greedy. This part's not too bad. There's another wind trap in a minute, and that one's a bigger problem. And this is the last beholder. So we can officially... Cast all of our buffs without having to worry about it. And this is a good time to put up acid resistance. Acid resistance, good. That ladder does not actually touch, so we're going to have to jump and hope the ladder doesn't glitch out. This place, man. This place. We're going to get another little ambush instead of a ladder. This time Thrak Hounds. <clears throat> Remember, they cast a lot of acid spells and instant death spells. But again, uh, I'm overleveled. Playing on normal. This is going to be Arcane Oozes. They are... Kind of annoying if you're a spellcaster, because they if they hit you, they actually drain your spell points. Shouldn't be a huge issue if you have any kind of ooze fighting weapon. I have a crystal weapon, so I don't have to worry about it. So I don't even have to change weapons. But... They are required oozes. You have to kill some oozes, so make sure you can kill them somehow. And arcane oozes resist all elements, I think. I don't think that they're weak to any of them. There you are. They kind of spawn a little slow. I think they used to spawn all at the same time, but then the fight was kind of hard. So now they spawn slower. You can jump onto this crack if your jump isn't high enough to get on the rock. And you just, you gotta kind of just go for it. These jets are the, mo are the most annoying part of this quest. If you get knocked off, you have to walk from the entrance all the way back through the first air jets through the jump, climbing up all the way around over here. So, I made this with 15% speed. It's not even the best speed you can get right now. The problem with this one is when you fall off and you come back, these aren't synchronized anymore. So, they more or less go at the same time right now. <sighs> but that's really obnoxious to deal with if you don't have if they're not if they're not synced up or you don't have something like a the monk's abundant step or favorite soul's wings to just push you the rest of the way because if you force your way even if the game is like okay yeah but then we're going to knock you away to the left as long as you're in the little spot with the treasure chest, it'll bonk you up. Probably shouldn't clap next to the mic. Probably going to bonk you up next to 
the wall that's in there with the chest. So we give her her items. And then this evil shadow pops out and we kill it. The end. Not sure why it gave us the text box two extra times, but um, if you're on harder difficulties or epic, a whole like you get like four copies of her, and she's like a spellcaster boss, and it's actually a little scary. But we're on normal mode and heroic, so you hit the one lady that spawns in front of you, and you win. Hooray! So we got their wizard back. She's gonna like stay in here and recover. Her boyfriend, I guess, is going to stand outside and keep guard in case any more didn't, didn't actually want to go back in there. In case any more evil mind spiders show up, I guess, because he did a good job the first time. Meh. And now we do another one of those quests that people do a lot. So we want their thief back. Well, the assassin. So she has basically went home. So we're supposed to go over here. So he says... A gigantic golem calling itself the inevitable smashed through here trying to kill her so all of this like rubble right here was just that like this is that a broken water tower I don't think I ever actually stopped to look at how this is really just damage from the golem so she retreated home So she went, I mean, she went home to her tribe, right? Because her tribe can help protect her. So we're going to murder every single member of her tribe trying to keep us out until we can go and say, Hey, you want to come adventuring with us? Oh no, spotted by a lookout. So this is another one of those introductory quests. This is like a two minute little intro. Which is funny because this is one of the longest quests I think in the game if you don't if you're not used to speedrunning this quest. And it has an introduction quest. Like of all of the quests to get a bonus little opening scene. We don't even really need to kill these guys. I mean, I'm hitting these guys on a two. I should tell you how much effort I'm putting into fighting these. If I had the ability to be playing everything on hard, I would be. But that is a subscriber benefit. Playing on hard, bonus XP, you get double the favor from every quest as you go. If you're playing on hard, triple if you're playing on nothing but elite. And yeah, you can just play the quest again on hard and then again on elite, but that takes so long. All right, trolls, are you done? Are you done falling down? Cool. Two minutes, twelve seconds. There's the entrance. Now we can actually begin going through and killing all of her people, all of. All of them. 
Just all of them. There's the inevitable. This is a very long quest. This quest has redonkulous experience. Like, it's... It looks like it's just like... So it's a base XP of 8k. We're at minus 25%. It's still kind of looking at 10k just to start. And it's going to go up. For one thing, we're going to beat up this random guy here and get a thousand experience. 1,292 experience for walking in, turning a corner, and beating this guy's face up. Is that a wisdom? No. Every named guy, every optional guy in here that only has like a chance to spawn is going to be worth a thousand experience. Just all of them. Come on, Hireling. Hireling is going to have a bad time. That door is trapped. Good job, Hireling. This is what I pay you for. It's got a force trap. Two force traps. So we're going to try to run through. Okay, we made it. These archers are usually shooting at you from through the doorway. So I stand right on right where there where they can't actually shoot at me while I'm waiting for my moment. This one is also trapped. This one is the one I was thinking of that would just hey, hey, hey. Really? Hmm. I don't think these are random traps, but I'm just going to have him open all the doors because some of them do have force burst traps on them. There's just some extra enemies in there. We go this way. And we're going to have to fight some stuff to get out of this room. Specifically, scorpions. There's a scarrow in the doorway. And there's a bunch of guys on the ledge up above. So if I wanted to, I could pull out my ranged weapon and plink these guys to death, but I'm not going to. There's a shrine up there. There's more guys on the ledges, more archers and such, but since they're up on a ledge, they can't follow us. So I believe we are due a little cutscene. Ah, there he is. So that's the inevitable. He is a Merut. They are from... Well, first of all, these are Earth Elementals, very clearly. As soon as these are all dead, that door opens and you have to fight a bunch of... Uh, drow will just come charging through the door. So we're going to behead all of those. <laughs> I wasn't actually expecting the cleave to just kill them all. Oh man, this one is very clearly and obviously trapped. Boom. Man, I even took damage from over there, right? Move even further back. That's just an optional fight, but there is a chest around the corner. But if you open the chest, it spawns some scorpions. Just be aware. An inevitable is a golem. It is not your regular kind of golem. They are usually from the plane of law. They're kind of like order golems. I believe this one specifically is from Delore, which is the plane of death. Turns out, Vale 
has cheated death. And kind of like the movie uh, Final Destination, if you cheat death, the uh, death comes for you. The Maroots will hunt you down. Because you're supposed to be dead, and they're going to put you back dead. Alright. Killing casters. So we can move. Apparently I didn't kill the right caster. Alright. I'm going to turn the wrong way here first, because sometimes there's a named guy over here. Oh, there is. So that's another another chunk of XP. That one was only 800. Interesting. They are usually all the same. I guess I can take the cannon. That is weird that they were different amounts. Hmm. Still. He was roughly 1,000 XP. The only one I missed was the only one I cared about hitting. There's a lot of guys in these tunnels. A lot. If you just run around randomly, you're going to end up in a bad place. Because there's a lot of them that are also stealthed. So just be careful that you're actually clearing out the hallways as you go. You really don't want to end up accidentally on a green alert. And then the spellcasters pop up around the corner. There is sometimes a named guy down in this hole. Uh, not today, apparently. So, sometimes, you may have noticed, uh, we get a 10% bonus for not re-entering the quest, a 10% XP bonus for not dying. Uh, we get an XP bonus based on how many enemies we kill. And one of these is... Misadventure, how many breakable things we smash in the quest. I usually don't pay attention to it. However, all of the breakables of this quest are all in this little room. So just popping down here, there's your 10% bonus XP. That was it. You come down here into this very long, very high base XP quest... And you just break a bunch of boxes, you get another 10% bonus. Just right there. There might be some boxes somewhere else, but there's enough of them in that one spot. Just, it's all you need. So, this treasure chest right here is required because it actually only has a key in it. I thought I killed all the other guys. Man, wherever could this key go? <laughs> this one was safe. This time. So the Marut's gonna stomp, 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 stomp his way down the hallway. They do a lot of work trying to, like, show you that it's actually slowly smashing its way through the defenders just like you are we're actually getting a little ahead now super large door and now a very scary section she has friendly beholders she's friends with beholders I don't have anything special on this character for Beholders, so we're just going to run up there and hope I kill him fast. Ah, we got two at the same time. These ones... I'm going to go up this corner. The, don't go through the middle, because you'll be at the bottom of this area, and there's going to be Beholders shooting down at you all the time. You want to go up around the edges... 
and you can see them from pretty far away, like, like this. Equip your throwing dart or whatever you have and just back, back up. And you can just kill them from complete safety way over here. Make sure you're far enough away because their eye beams have twice the range of a normal spell. But you have infinity range on throwing darts. Or whatever your thing is. There's one right there. I have to get a little closer to get my dart to actually sail through correctly. Is he just going to sit there and take it? <laughs> okay. Free. Playing darts with this guy. He's the dartboard. I want to say there's one more. Oops. Oh, well, we'll find it. The goal here is to hit these three runes. My intelligence is too low to use this item. Okay, hireling, you shall use the runes. I didn't know that there was a minimum on those. Oh, man. Oh, that would suck. They're required. They're required. You have to hit these. If you don't have the intelligence, you're, you're done. Wow, we got all easy ones. Nice. Uh, they can spawn, like, way up there. So you'd have to do stuff like... Where's the first mushroom? Yeah, so you have to jump your way up on the mushrooms. You know, and just kind of Mario your way up the mushrooms in order to get to them. So there you go. There's the highest one. But I got all low ones, so that was easy. The objective will update as you run through here. Man, I didn't realize there was an intelligence check on those those runes. If you want another, like, basically free optional guy, because we've, we've only got two optional guys. That's actually kind of low. There's another optional guy in that cave. To, if you fall down, you must go forward with the quest. There's no way back up. So to get the optional guy... We need to land on these ledges over here, specifically that one, without jumping too high and bonking our head. Because if we bonk our head, it'll go boop and push us into the waterfall. So jumping, holding around the corner, and just right into the cliffside. And then we work our way up and here is another guy. I think this guy is always here. Wow, he was worth almost 2,000. I don't know why they're not all worth the same. I Maybe I've just never bothered actually looking at it. So there is a little geyser right here. It shoots you up. If you're a ranged character and you can land on this wall between the back area and the front, you can just go pew, 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 and just stay up here. If you've got a party member who can go all the way in and aggro everything, you are completely, well, ranged guys can shoot you back, but you can just pew, 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 this whole fight from up here. I, however, am a melee. So there's going to be a four waves. There's the wave that we're starting with right now. As soon as they're dead, this door opens. Note that that shrine is right there. Then this door opens. And finally, 
this door opens. Do not go all the way into that room. Okay. This used to take me so many tries back in the day before we had all of the power creep and everything. Plus, I'm on normal. Vale has a trio of named guards, right? Right around that corner. One of which is a beholder. A named beholder. Remember, red names, you cannot use stuns or any kind of crowd control on them. They count as bosses. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to try to fail a stealth check. I'm going to get into my skills, find stealth. Stealth, where'd you go? feet. <laughs> it's not a skill, it's a feat. Because it combines move silently and hide. So now it should Yeah, see, because I was trying they heard me. And hopefully they're not going to all charge out at the same time, which they did. So, beholder first. Um, ideally, you take out this lady second, because she is a caster, but the beholder is the, the big one. Remember, I'm immune to energy drain, which is his big thing. He could hit you with many, many negative levels, but he can't hit me because I'm immune to level drain. Because paladin. Well, because of our ability we just took. I've seen people, uh, if they have a better stealth than me, you could, like, sneak, like, here, and then, like, only one of them hears you because you're out of range of the other two, and they can run away. You kind of, like, get one at a time. Some people will, like, th throw throwing weapons against the wall to clang, and then, like, one of them will come investigate and then you get their attention because technically you're in their line of sight but not their line of sight there's a there's a couple tricks you can try obviously i i failed the one i wanted prudent for there's wisdom there's the wisdom we need uh but we need to put featherfall somewhere now uh that's always the problem every time you change one piece of gear it dominoes, and every other piece of gear needs to change. I'd really rather find wisdom goggles. So, you can't really tell. Uh, but she's a vampire. That is why the inevitable is after her, is because she chose vampirism over death. And the inevitable does not like people who cheat death. So, now that we're finally face to face with this guy, now we can just beat his face in. They have um, two special punches, thunder and lightning. One of them blinds you, the other one stuns you. So they actually are kind of, uh, kind of dangerous to fight. In melee, because if it stuns you, you're just kind of, you're just kind of dead. <laughs> you're you're just dead. But I'm overleveled. There's no chest on heroic. I don't know why. But we do get a bunch of XP. We got twelve thousand XP plus those three thousand, four thousand almost. That's a lot. The first quest only gave us like a thousand. Uh... All right, now to go get the last member.
So, the Gadgeteer. We're going to go and find their Artificer. Whose actual quest giver is like one of the most obnoxious ones in the game. Because he's way over here. Next to a port agent. Where do you even go? What port do you go to? You're the same one as the harbor, but you're way the hell over here. Okay, anyway. Here is a robot. Hello, robot. I'm here to speak to Haywire, but he is locked in his uh, factory. Factory is probably the word he used. So I was like, fine. He tells us where it is. We'll go knock. What could go wrong? We very slowly plot our way over there. Do, do, do. He's, that quest giver is nowhere near <laughs> the quest. Is it? Okay. All right. A wire foundry. This one is faster if you've got a party because there's a spot where you have to go left and right and you can if you've got two people you can split up <sighs> I never have two people you're going to be fighting a lot of constructs in this quest so it's Nice if you have a Construct Bane or at least an Adamantine weapon so that their damage reduction doesn't slow you down, but... So we have to push that lever to open our gate here. And by we have to push, I mean I'm just going to make the hireling do it. Hello, Assistant... RC2. I'm looking for Haywire. So, wave at the elementals. So we pull the levers. He's got like these kind of two player sort of gates because he doesn't want anyone to know what he's got here. And then what's this? Uh, that doesn't sound good. It's in my mind. And then we have to kill him. Run, save yourselves is the last thing he says as we kill him. And then a bunch of other Warforged are just attacking us. Hello, Speaking Stone. It's not safe for him to leave. We have to go to master control and shut down the defenses or blow up the entire foundry. And unfortunately, since we killed RC2, we have to go unlock the door ourselves, which involves fighting all of these Warforged. There are blade, so we're going to go left first. There are blade traps all over this little tower. There's a vertical one right here. There are horizontal ones as you go up. I'm just kind of... Ah. Those are mean, and I believe the trap box, even if you're a rogue is on the top. So you have to, somebody has to run through the stupid trap. As rough. As very rough. So just make sure your hireling doesn't die. So. More generic Warforged. Lots of uh, 
Lots of shipping containers here. Looks like somebody was planning on selling some Warforged, which is, I do believe, a bad idea. Because once the Warforged turn sentient and start deciding they don't want to be sold anymore, problem. Strangely enough, that is not what's happening here. This is not a rebellion. You would think it's a rebellion. It's not a rebellion. Alright, so the lever we want is all the way over here. It is also very trapped. I'm going to wait for the hireling. Tell the hireling to use it and we get off. Really? Trapped in Guam? Don't stand on there. It did shut off all the force fields, so now we have to fight our way out, too. Which... I mean, for me, it's not anything. Because we are, again, overleveled. Something keeps, like, tickling my foot. And now that I'm thinking about it, I can't not think about my foot. And now it, like... One of those things where now that you're thinking about it, you can't think about anything else. It's just going to itch forever now. Forever. This is life now. Alright. Are we done punching, guys? Don't hit the boxes if you can help it, because there's just going to have more Warforged in it. Come, come on. I don't want to have to kill all of you. Well, I do. I do actually want to kill all of you. But not for the reasons you think. Alright, before we leave, because we have to go back the way we came. Before we leave, we can hit this lever here. It opens up this middle section. And there is a shrine. That's the section we're going to next. The long way. Somebody figures out how to get that lever through the wall. Don't tell the devs. There is a little trick you can do to get back down through the blades, which does not involve standing in the blades to demonstrate. You can fit in this little crack right here and just coast your way down. All right, now to do the other side. I'm expecting guys to run out and attack me. Okay. There are two crumbling floor traps. I don't remember exactly where the safe spot is because it's different on the two different ones. I'm going to say... Hey, I got it right. Ha <laughs> ha. Hug right first. Uh, cause you don't want, you don't want any part of all of that. In a perfect world, uh, there's a, an enemy on the other side. You can throw your hireling to go attack and he'll trigger the trap for you. Really try to put me to sleep and then immediately wake me up. All right, here's the other one. Oh, is it on the left or the right? It's not up against the wall. It's a pipe. And I want to say it's here. Go get that thing. <laughs> Go. I want to fall down. 
No, nope, didn't hit the jump. It was on the left, not the right. Okay. At least if you're hugging the the wall, you will land on a pipe so you're not at the bottom. This one goes down so far. So far. Do not fall down. It goes so far. It goes so far you have to like go into a different room and climb a ladder or something to come out. Right there, like you, you dare, do not fall down. Do not fall down. All right, yeah, I just, I guessed wrong. I knew it was pipes. That's why I was trying to get the hireling to trigger it. At least on the way back, you can see. <laughs> Unlike the blade trap, that one's just... All right, it happened once. This is the most dangerous room in Stormreach. Not from a combat point of view, but from a... Just existential danger to Stormreach point of view. What Haywire has done, he has a working Warforged factory. He has the ability to make Warforged. How the hell did he get this? The world may never know, but this is exceedingly bad. First of all, Haywire is a bit of a opportunist. So he's basically selling armies to whoever will pay. He's also not smart enough to have put any safety features in, pl in place. Now, that this is why he has all that security that we came through at the beginning, right? Because he knows this is exceedingly illegal. Like, this is the kind of thing that gets you disappeared. Not just because people want to steal this technology from you so they can make their own armies, but because just one existing at all is potentially a threat to all of Stormreach. There is an entity called the Lord of Blades. He is the god of Warforged. I really thought I could make, make it back up there. Oh, screw you. It is the plot of a later quest line that House Caneth, the artificer, just like this guy, the artificer guild, uh, they secretly have a working forge. And he does not take kindly to that, and he decides that it's his now, because it's his people. I do not mean he is their god in that, like, he is this abstract idea of, like, their perfect self or anything like that. No, he literally is just walking around with godlike powers. Because on Eberron, a god is determined by how much people believe in him, and all of the Warforged believe in him. And that's enough. That's enough. He has a lot more power than he should. Plus, he's already like a veteran of the Great Wars. Boing. Mind the gap. All right. There's a bunch of those levers. All those do is I think they're supposed to shut down fire traps. We are again going to have uh, our hireling pull that lever. The trap 
is a lot of blades. You're going to see it. The trap box is actually you walk on that ledge out around there. It's around the corner. That doesn't matter to me because I can't I can't do it anyway. That's a that's a lot of spikies. That's a lot of spikies. That's that's why the hireling did it. We could go through there and rest. Uh, we could even go through there and go down the other side if we felt like that was faster. Do the little trick where you come squeeze through the crack. But it's kind of the same distance either way at this point. Well, no, maybe maybe it would have been faster to go the other way. Not now, because I'm already in motion, but... Across the pipe. Alright. We ain't done yet. We've just opened Master Control. Well, we've opened the way to Master Control. We ain't even to Master Control yet. Sorry, little guys. You know, now that I think about it, there is something that I'm surprised is not showing up. So, I think you have to actually cast the true seeing spell itself like the actual true seeing not my item true seeing and if you do so which I'm actually going to take my take my ring off and put it back on again is it this one it's this one off on nope didn't do anything so the reason these things are attacking us which is never revealed in quest it is only if you happen to come in here with a true seeing spell. If you look at them with true seeing, you can see these suspicious, translucent, purple head crab things on their heads. The same kind of spiders that had put their wizard out of commission. They are psychic entities. They can't typically exist in the real world, which in the lore of Eberron is why Warforged exist. They were created to be the physical vessels of the dream monsters. So Haywire launched a factory to make more Warforged, and somehow the dream monsters infested it. So he's really just making an army of dream monsters. But they can't get out. <laughs> and they aren't going to. So we need the key out of that chest. Three inner rings, three outer rings. What we need is we need to change these to N. So this blue one here needs says N. So does that yellow one. So does that purple one. But these are locked. So how do we unlock these? Well, you unlock them by getting the two next to them, that symbol. So this is trident. So if I go over here and I switch this to trident, and I switch this to trident. Get out of here, ooze. Now I can move the one in the middle over to N. And this one is F. So we're going to move this to F. Move the one on the other side of it to F. And move this to N. Yellow is H. There was probably a more efficient order to do them, but... Uh, 
I think what they were aiming for was like a color puzzle, like, oh, purple is a mix of red and blue, but yellow is not a mix of red and green. And green and blue don't make, well, I guess you can maybe, this one doesn't have an official color name on it. Like that one says green rune wheel. You could maybe argue that this is like a greenish blue, but still. Green and red do not make yellow. That is not how that works. Green and red make brown. Still, it's just, it's the two next to them. All right. Whole bunch of iron golems whole bunch of grease spells when he gets to half i think he maybe maybe that's only on epic there's there's additional waves oh i just killed him too fast look there they are i was right all right take your chest first <laughs> well okay So, get up your fire resist. Get up your fire resist on your hireling. We're pulling the self-destruct. And now we're going to Metroid our way out. Dun, 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 dun. You really do have to, uh, you're on a time limit. There really is a time limit. If you do not make it to the end... The place blows the hell up, and you're dead. There's also no re-entering this quest, because it's all gone. I don't have enough jump, so I have to take the lower path right here. Oh, come on. Obviously, this goes faster if you have enough jump to not have to take the baby jumps the whole way. All right, we're up. Most of this is just running and trying not to step in the traps that are going off. You're not in that much of a hurry. Like, I'm not convinced that the timer is quite that fast. I have a suspicion that it's actually certain like you cross the line into a room and then he says oh so many minutes but i don't want to come this far into the quest and then stand here to test it right so this one conveniently breaks before you get there so that you can just jump don't forget to pull your hireling Do, 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 do. It doesn't matter which way you go. They are. They go to the exact same place. We're literally just running. Running, running, running. Trying not to just walk straight through the fire. Stupid grease. Okay. So here's the big blast door. So... You do not want to be standing where he, uh, yeah, you don't want to be standing anywhere over here. So we're going to go make a hard left right here. Take out this fire elemental. Do not fall down. I... I think the quest is uncompletable if you fall down. I don't... Oh, there's the... Uh, there's his wait for 20, and then he shuts the shuts the door. <laughs> it basically fast-forwards the self-destruction. So that you don't actually have to wait here for the whole counter. Do not jump for the stupid mushroom. It's only a mushroom. 
it's not worth having to redo the entire quest. Don't get the stupid mushroom. It's only a mushroom. I'm not speaking about anyone in particular. Just don't get the mushroom. So, give Haywire a high five. And uh, he gives us this lightning rod as thanks for blowing his factory up. You can mess with his levers and stuff and he just gets mad at you. So yeah, that was not what he wanted to happen per se. He didn't want to lose his whole factory, but oh boy, it's a good thing he did. <sighs> Infinite number of robot soldiers just pouring out into Stormreach. And the Korai aren't stupid, right? They're, they wouldn't have even been like, oh, well, you know, we're just going to be like slavering monsters and just stab everything. No, they would have... They have plans. They are fully capable of going, all right, we'll just send a couple into the city at a time. Warforge don't need to eat or drink or whatever. We'll just, we'll just fill the city up with our soldiers, and nobody will even notice. We'll voluntarily go and do all the crappy, cleaning jobs and stuff. And yeah, yeah, robot apocalypse. Robot apocalypse was very, very, very possible right there. They never addressed that he had one of the most illegal things in all of Eberron. They just, they just never address it. That, wow. <laughs> wow. Like, not for this character, but... Wow. Plus three holy silver longbow of deadly? Wow. So, we have all of their group together, which is nice. And then he sends you off. They have ironically been hired. Now that they're back together, they've been hired. Their first job back together is to break into the Vault of Night. Because uh, the bank, whoops-a-daisy, is locked out of their own bank. Unfortunately, it's a raid. It's actually two raids back-to-back. -back. So you break, you follow the Laughing Knives. You help them break into the bank. And this is like, this is the Fort Knox. This is the main bank. This is where they put all the scary stuff. This is... A big deal bank. We are breaking in. It's got a lot of steps to it. And then at the very end, you do one of the coolest raid fights, which I've only ever got to do, like, once. The vault, the true vault, is not here. It's in freaking space! And you fight a red dragon in space. And if you fall down, you die. Because you just fell from space. It's pretty cool. Unfortunately, it's a raid. It's not something that I can do. And the like, I can't even get into the area. I would love to be able to just go into the... Even if I couldn't win, I'd love to go into that arena. But I can't, because you have to be through the bank first. Sad, but that happens sometimes because most of the quests and or most of the big end game stuff in this game is centered around raids, and I don't do raids, so I end up not being able to participate in a lot of the cool end quest stuff. So the Vault of Night pack. Is it worth it? I would say... 
there's four very different quests. Uh, the fifth and the sixth thing you get in this pack are both raids. So if you like raids, yeah, those are those are good raids. People run those still. The the gear is more or less outdated. It, I don't believe any of this stuff has got a major revamp lately. There is a really cool greatsword in the raid. Used to be the, the single best weapon in the game, practically. Um, I like this pack. So, the four quests are very different. They are well themed. I like the idea of like getting the band back together. Like I, I like how this pack is put together. That second quest in particular is like bananas crazy. Just like weird floaty mindscape. The third one gives massive XP for its level. Like it gave us a lot and we had a XP penalty for being over leveled, right? We walked out of there with 16k or so, and that's with a 25% penalty. Yeah, I, I like this pack. It is a little diminished in that the raids are the main, like, selling point. So if you are like me and just running by yourself, you're buying six quests, and you're only ever going to get to play four of them. You know, my wish list right underneath make all hirelings gold hirelings so that you can just have whoever you want. Right under that is solo mode for raids. Just to have the ability to do the raid at all. So, yeah. I think it is worth getting, especially if you do the if you want to do the raids. It's not integral, so like in the in the grand scheme of should you prioritize this pack with your you know prioritize in the grand scheme of things, is this where you want to prioritize putting your money? No. But I would put this definitely over, well, definitely over Slave Lords. <laughs> These quests are fun. They have unique stuff to them. But they're not integral, and this pack is not super well placed level-wise anymore. Because you're right in between Feywild and Ravenloft. And you've got Isle of Dread at level 7. And the adventure packs are all such huge things. It kind of overshadows anything within three levels of them, so very skippable, but I still recommend picking it up when it's on sale, because they are fun. Especially if you can get somebody to go and do that raid. So that's it for me today. I am... Let's see. Let's, where, are we go, where are we going next? Ah! Oh, we're going to a very old pack. Next time we go look at the Necropolis again we're going to do that second set of quests see if they are uh, see if they're any better than run down all the hallways we'll see thanks for watching and uh, yeah level, level 8 is not going to be <laughs> terribly interesting from this point forward uh, I don't know if I if I can say anything about the up next video, definitely watch this one before you buy the next pack. <laughs> Nobody buys the next pack. Or the one after. But that's for you to decide. See you next time.